Hey guys, in this video I want to go over uh, a concept called proportional and non-proportional relationships. And it's kind of a jump from one variable equations to two variable equations. And you can see that because we've got a variable here, y, and a variable x. Um, and previously, if you came off of an equation that looked like this, even though there are multiple variables, it's the same one. There's an x here and an x here. And when you solved it, you had one of three outcomes. You either had one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. In this scenario, though, when we have two variables, that's not the case. There's always infinite amount of solutions. And the way that we kind of like organize those solutions is in a table and in a graph. Um, so what, how, you would, how I recommend you approach this is you kind of view this as like an input-output machine. Maybe you recall this from elementary school or something where you get this like little box and... Um, you put in values here, something happens to it, and it outputs a value here. That's what this whole concept is about. And you were prepared for this years ago, but now it's just not represented in this kind of like cute picture. You're just given an equation. Um, but the concept is still the same, except the input, let me write that up here. The input went inside this machine here and it spit out an output. In these equations, it's the same idea. It's just that the X is the input and the y value is the output. And in your last lesson, when we dealt with like one variable stuff, you just had to figure out what x was. Now you just pick random values for x and then you figure out the y value. So what we're gonna do is plug that in and I'm gonna organize that in a table. If I plug in zero, let's, let's say I start off, actually let me start with a negative number. Let's say I start off with negative two, make it a different color. If I input negative two into this equation, it would look like this. It would be y equals one half times negative two. Well, one half times negative two is negative one. So when you input negative two, your output is negative one. And then you kind of like go and do this a bunch more times. So I'm gonna leave this pink writing here and I'm just gonna input some other values. It seems to make sense to kind of like go next in line, which would be negative one and zero and one and two. So negative or negative one plugged into this, one half times negative one would be negative one half. And then let's plug in zero. Let's keep this thing rolling. Uh, if I plug in zero for this, uh, one half times zero is zero. Okay, and then I can keep doing this. I know one times one half is one half and two times one half is one. Now, the way that I'd like you to think about this is that the equation should be viewed as an input and output machine. And that kind of goes for no matter how it's written, you should think of equations as input output machines. And I'm going to write that right up here. Uh, tables, on the other hand, are used to organize inputs and outputs. Let me change this font up real quick. Make it red or something so it stands out. There we go. Tables are in, used to in, organize inputs and outputs. And then maybe you can guess what a graph is for. Um, but what a graph is used for, if you took that time to guess, is that it's used for plotting those inputs and outputs. So not only are these things inputs and outputs, but they're also coordinate pairs with x and y values. So I'm gonna plot the point negative two, one on the x, go back to negative two and down one, and there's this point right here. Then I do that with this one, negative one and negative one half. It's kind of hard to plot that one, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna plot zero, zero though, that's the origin, that's pretty easy. And then I can plot, uh, I'm gonna skip this one as well. I'm gonna plot two, one, so over two and up one. Now, there's kind of a pattern here, and this table is a limited window, but I could keep this pattern going and going and going. And the pattern here is looks like that, if I were to look at the grids, it goes up one, over two, up one, over two, up one, over two. Then I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna connect all of my inputs and outputs with a line. And when you look at what it creates, since it creates a line, that's what, why these things are called linear equations pretty cool stuff um, but the one on the left here I'm gonna put this at the top because that's the title of both of these things 
But the one on the left here is considered it's something special. Um, the fact that this one passes through the origin makes this linear equation a proportional one. You may have heard this word before, and I'll cover proportional in another video, but just talking about from a linear equation per standpoint, this one is considered proportional because it's special and it passes through the origin. I'm going to show another example of this over here. Again, thinking about this equation as an input-output machine, I'm going to plug in the same values. I'm going to plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Um, let's do that over here. y is equal to negative 2 times negative 2 plus 4. If I evaluate this and I go ahead and solve, negative 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. So the output, when I plug in negative 2, is 8. So now I've got a, a coordinate pair. I'm gonna, I'll plot them later on. I'm going to go ahead and keep solving some more inputs and outputs. It's fun stuff, let me tell you. Uh, so if I input, let's go with negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Positive 2 plus 4 is 6. And you know what? I'm actually going to stop plugging in values. I think there's a pattern I can see here. It looks like this thing is going down 2 every time. So I'm going to just assume the next one is 4, and the next one is 2, and the next one is zero and that's a pattern once you identify the pattern you can just use that in your table tables are very good for identifying patterns but now I'm gonna go ahead and plot those points in my graph um, negative 2 8 that that's a point down here um, negative 1 6 uh, let's see that looks like uh, let me see negative 2 8 negative 1 6 so that's gonna be Wait, I made a mistake. I plotted it at negative 8. It should be negative 2, 8 up here, negative 1, 6, and then 0, 4, and then 1, 2. And then I'm going to connect all of my inputs and outputs here. And again, if you notice, it creates a straight line. That's what makes this one also a linear equation. Um, the difference here is that this one does not pass through the origin. So this is considered a non-proportional relationship. Um, so that's kind of like the main concept of this is that going from one variable to two you'll have infinite numbers of outcomes and those outcomes can be plotted in tables and then the tables can be plotted in a graph so they're all connected and that's it so I hope this video helps good luck